to another edition of the Church Solutions Podcast. Almost forgot what we were doing here. Uh, my name is Dr. Phil Thompson. And I'm Steve Lacey. I'm not really a doctor, but uh, thanks for being with us today, folks. Uh, we're glad to have you here. We do this podcast every week, and we work with churches and ministries. We uh, help organizations use technology, and we do things such as... Uh, uh, you know, streaming video and mobile apps and websites and all that good stuff. And we also, because we have a lot of experience working with ministry and churches ourselves in our own local uh, groups, we uh, we help uh, with volunteers and encourage pastors and those kind of things. And uh, one of the things we're going to talk about today is actually marketing. And so if you are involved in your church, even as, as a leader or a key volunteer, uh, this is something you should really consider because marketing is very important if you want to reach yeah. people and grow. And so this is a controversial topic with some churches too, right? Though, yeah, no. I, I guess it could be. And right. we're going to bring in our special guest here who uh, has actually recently joined our team, and her name is Brittany Messerly. And uh, Brittany, thanks for being with us today, and thanks for being a part of our team. Yes, thanks for having me. I'm very, this is my first uh, podcast, so I'm very excited. That's right. Well, hopefully one of many, and hopefully I'll continue to get your name right, even though I put it up <laughs> two or three takes earlier. You did it, you did it great this time. This time well, you know, on. it's just that lo loads of broadcasting experience. So uh, <laughs> anyhow, so so Brittany is, uh, she really works uh, with, with marketing. She loves being uh, kind of a bridge, I guess, between uh, marketing and IT stuff. Uh, she's got uh, an extensive background in computer science, and she uh, uses a lot of her understanding and experience in, in really marketing strategy. And so uh, we're, we're glad to have you here as far as the team. And so this podcast is going to be called one of, uh, one of five or six different titles. <laughs> I think we've, we've, we've settled, Steve and I and Brittany have settled, I think, on seven essential steps to promoting your church. But just for your sake here, uh, we talked about maybe using the title How to Nurture Your Ministry by Marketing. Not a bad idea. Why Marketing uh, Matters for Your Church. Again, very important and certainly tells that. The other one was Do's and Don'ts for Marketing Your Church. And uh, we could come up with a goofy one, but I think we've decided <laughs> on the seven essential tips for promoting your church. So it really is important. And if you're not open to this, uh, give us give us a few minutes. See if we can change your mind. Right. And if not, well, you know, okay, must be something wrong. So, but, uh, <laughs> so, Phil, before we dive in with Brittany, you've had some experience as senior pastor, senior marketer for your church as well, right? I mean, you were the, the yeah. chief marketing officer. And what? <laughs> I, don't know if I was the chief, but yeah, uh, yeah. I've been doing. So you've tried different things with your church and found some things that worked for you for the community you were in, right? Yeah, and this fact, is of, years ago, right? Well, yeah, and I mean, I, I'm still kind of helping uh, my oh, yeah, church now, but that's true. Uh, but but I mean, I remember years ago when I moved here to Tucson in 1979, I worked with a, a fellow in ministry and and uh, he was really good at trying to get people's attention. And one of the things he did was he would create opportunities and then he'd hit the local newspaper up here in Tucson. And one time, I mean, he, he would really he'd use every source he could, you know, I mean, from I mean, we're talking the 70s here, so we didn't have the Internet. We didn't have some of the stuff we have now. But uh, he uh, we actually got on the front page of the religious section of the Tucson Citizen, I think. And uh, and then I also work with a church, uh, not well, I guess it's been a while, but uh, he, he found we found that using like uh, we used to have a thing called the dandy dime around here. And now it's called something else. The little shopper. I think every oh, yeah. every city has like a little newspaper that has some, you know, content in it, but also ads. And so he also yeah. found that that if you could get the front on the front page or the back page of the like shopper. It really helped us grow our church. Yeah. I mean, and this is all pre-internet yeah. days, yeah, all right? Yeah, pre-internet so, days. Uh, but he's still doing it, I think. And of yeah, course, right. and we then did. he moved into television, right? We're yeah, talking about moved, the same guy. Moved into television. Uh, doing spots on cable yep, TV or yep. something. And did some kind of outrageous spots. I mean, they were okay, but they were really different. And so actually, when I was working for other churches after that, uh, I have a background in radio. I, I, especially in Kansas, when I went and started a church in Kansas, uh, I, I started doing some, I guess, not your typical religious 
commercials or your typical promotions. I actually did some some stuff based on my experience with Dave, uh, and it really uh, it really helped us grow. I mean, we did radio and we actually saw people coming so, in. Right, and I know that I mean the church that I'm a part of now and have been a part of for way for a very long time. I came off of a crazy radio ad. We were That's... new to town and we're just yeah, going hard. through the dial and and yeah. we advertised the Zen pancake house or something like that. it was a crazy ad. Yeah, I, I, I think I was a part of that if I remember. Yeah, yeah, I just remember so... going, these guys have a real good sense of humor. We gotta yeah. go check these guys mm -hmm. out. So anyway, but the all game right. has changed now. We're all talking things way before Brittany was born, probably. <laughs> so <laughs> that's true. Where's my glasses? So let's talk. Well, so let's let's just go ahead and move on here now that we've rambled on a little bit and killed more time. Uh, so let's <laughs> talk about some points here. Yeah. Um, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and, you know, one of the things that you were talking to us a little bit about were some points, some mm -hmm. essential steps. Yes. By the way, there I think we have actually eight here, even though we've called this seven. Uh, one of the first things you talk about here is developing uh, your church's unique brand. So elaborate yes. a little bit about that. What do you mean by brand? Isn't that just something that uh, uh, secular companies do? I mean, right, right. Um, <clears throat> well, as Steve was saying, using humor is a huge part of it. But um, we'll talk about that. Yes. Yeah, so your brand is a really important part of any type of organization. Nonprofits have brands. Uh, companies, of course, have brands, but churches have brands just as much as anyone else does. Um, your brand is just what makes you unique. It's what sets you apart from mm -hmm. <clears throat> other churches. Your, it can be anything from how your congregation is ran, if you have more of a traditional setup more um, or more contemporary setup, how your pastor is. And mm -hmm. one of the best ways, really, of accentuating your brand is, is with humor. And it's something that you can show people like this is, um, well, Phil also has a good experience with this, with using humor as um, like in social media and on Facebook, if you, or well, we'll talk more about this in actual social media, but <clears throat> the main point of brands is that people love to connect with something. They don't want to just go to a, random church that they don't really know anything about or they feel like they would just be walking in and having no idea who the pastor is, what the church is like. And so if you give them something to connect to and so that they can understand really what your church is about, then that right. can help foster new visitors, help keep ones that you have engaged, really understand your guys' core message, um, all of those. This, this kind of goes along with the 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 idea that you attract who you are i mean exactly kind of a basic That's principle great. within yeah. church and you know and within the church that i'm a part of who they were or it's not as much as who they are now but early on and when i think phil you were part of the church during that back mm -hmm. time they had you know the 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 um the senior pastor was the worship pastor and so worship and the and the music and we were really very music oriented and we tended to attract a bunch of musicians and right which just kind of kept the ball going and so right. yeah that would be an example of you know hey you know we're really into the music we really you know <clears throat> feel it's an important and a gifting then you would promote that would be a brand potentially oh right? definitely definitely yeah mm -hmm. So, so when I think of brand, uh, I, I, I think of like logos mm -hmm. and those kind of things, but you're saying it's actually more than just, Oh, it's much more than that. Than yes. Just having your, um, your, your church's yeah, logo. It's, it really, it's anything that it's more of like an identity for your organization. Right. So, so it, can like, it can encompass a lot of, um, parts to that. So like a, like a logo is part of it and kind of mm -hmm. your designs, but, um, but it's really more of your identity. Right. And it's kind of, Hard to, I mean, you think of a company like, um, you know, Apple right. versus IBM. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they're both in the computer business, but they have very, very different, different kind of styles and <clears throat> stuff. So it's really, I guess you're poking at kind of identify. Yeah, you don't want to advertise something you're not as well. True. You want to be, be true to your, yeah, that's definitely yeah, you true. You wouldn't say, hey, I'm 
average age in our church is 65 and we're a really cool hip happening skateboarding group you know yeah yeah so, <laughs> probably not go over too well right. it's a bunch of old old hippies in my church but uh so, that's, skateboard brand. Thing, huh? <laughs> that's a brand definitely <laughs> yeah, there you go there you go yeah absolutely so uh so so I, you need to be consistent though mm -hmm. too right i mean you don't want to be all over the map right you want to so. identify some core principles that and some core right. um, kind of categories i guess you would put yourself into or ways you would describe yourself and kind of yeah steer it that way yeah and then you also mentioned about humor and that was one of the things that you know steve steve knows who i'm talking about david McAllister. we we actually use a lot of humor at times uh in what we were doing and so humor uh uh i mean humor really i think is is a great way to attract people and communicate uh right i, I guess the only thing i would say and i've been guilty of this in the past uh, shockingly is that sometimes you got to be careful the humor True. you use, mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't step across the line, whatever right. that line is. <laughs> right, Phil's you do have to. Phil, yeah. knows, Phil doesn't know where the line is. Yeah. That's why. Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of sad. <laughs> Which, that is something you can identify more blatantly with um, with other officials in your church or who might be helping you run the website or the social media yeah. or anything or flyers. You can kind of identify where those lines are. Um, yeah. So that way sure. yeah, you don't run into yeah. anything. Yeah, All right, yeah. let's move on to the next yes. essential. What is the next essential? Brittany, you want to tell well, us what that is? Yeah, the next one we can do, let's talk about follow-up tools. So follow-up tools, this is something that other businesses really rely on recently with the age of email and texting and everything. And so it can be really beneficial for churches as well. Um, I was reading a statistic that Growing churches average 18 to 21% visitor retention. So it can be really important to follow up because that can get people to actually come back. Um, so with this, I want to talk about if you do stream online, um, I know we have this capability. I'm sure others do as well, but you can automatically capture emails. So you can email people or you can text people information. And so it's also important to get that contact information for in-person visitors. So you can kind of add them to your, your little online congregation so that you can send out emails just to keep people informed. You don't wanna spam anyone. Don't, um, don't send like an email every day. Don't do anything like that. But, um, but just really either educational pieces or Maybe a little summary of what the sermon's going to be about. Um, you can, or even like a quick, thank you for joining us. Here's kind of a summary of what we discussed. If you have a different event or if you have something bigger you want to promote, it can be really beneficial to just have that extra communication to reach out to people. Um, and so, yeah, that's what I yeah. want to talk about with follow up tools. Yeah. They, and just, uh, I think um, you mentioned that we have and, and others may, I don't think, I think we are unique in this. Are we the only one? Well, yes, there you I go. think we're <laughs> the only one in our field that have an automated follow-up tool. When it, so when it comes to streaming video. Yeah, with so, streaming, yeah. yes. Yeah, with yeah. The streaming online. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm sure that, I mean, the, you know, we're getting into the topic of, you know, the, um, is the ministry a business? You know, if you have a business and you're you have an online presence, you're going to you're going to want to follow up, and so mm -hmm. you want to employ the same kind of tools that you would. Right. Um, yeah. And business. I would. <clears throat> I'm sorry to step on you, but I, I would also add to this, and that is, uh, you should have a system in place, uh, and and probably somebody that's overseeing mm -hmm. that system probably one person that oversees that so that, you know, when people do come in and you do have their information and you do, you know, you want to make sure that you're either, if you're sending emails or maybe phone calls, uh, phone calls today, it, it's so hard because you, you don't talk. Most people with caller ID will not pick up the phone if they don't know who the number is usually. Exactly. Uh, but I will say this, that even if that's the case and you are making follow-up phone calls saying, hey, thanks for joining our church. Mm -hmm. Thanks for being a part of our church last Sunday. Uh, we just want to say thanks for coming and let us know if you have any questions. So even if that goes to voicemail, I still think that's an effective thing because mm -hmm. they're going to look right. at listen to it later anyhow. So you may not right. get the conversation uh, because of caller ID, but it still shows that you care and that's that true. you're willing to answer right. any mm -hmm. questions. And this also emphasizes... 
This also emphasizes the need to get their contact information. Mm -hmm. So you want right. to employ, uh, I won't say tactics, but uh, <laughs> methods, tools, tools. tools to yeah. um, incentivize people to provide their contact info. You know, I, I think a lot of churches and in our churches, you fill out your contact card and you, you know, if you're the first time guest, you come to a special area and you get a free gift. And so that kind of, well, that's good incentive. Yeah. 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 That can yeah. work really well. All right. So follow up tools. Uh, yes. So let's talk a little bit about the next point. And that is website management. Something yes. that it's, I mean, you know, obviously we've talked a lot about websites and how you need to have a nice website, but the mm -hmm. other thing is you really need to kind of keep it up. Yes. Up to date. So expound on that a little bit, Brittany, if you would. Yes, that's a um, that's a really good point to start with. Is that some people will just kind of will just build a nice website or hire an outside person to build a nice website and let's just let it sit there and not do much with it, not really update it. And that is <laughs> that's a big mistake. These websites can be used so can be so important to getting messages out to. Um, once again, to accentuate your brand. And so having someone on your team who can edit the website is very important. You can have, you can have someone build a website for you on a um, CMS, which is content management system, so that it's much easier for kind of an average person that doesn't know a lot about IT that they can edit it. Um, and so having someone just with that capability on your team that they can at least edit some content, they don't need to know a lot of code, but that they can just edit some content for right. you is very important. Yeah. Like um, for churches, I would say having your service times or other schedules um, right on the homepage, right somewhere really easy that someone can access it is very important so that it's right. Um, if you stream live, you can have a link to the live stream as well. But just so it's it's right there because you want um, that's obviously a big point of your website is you want people to know your service time so they can come in right. different events that you have, um, and also making sure that it's mobile optimized. Right. More and more and more of web traffic is coming from mobile devices, from tablets. Um, so making sure that it's mobile optimized so that people don't have a bad experience because that can be a big reason why people will just leave your website as if they can't really read anything, it's too far out, it's not mobile optimized. Um, so that's another important feature as well. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> you know, one of the keys, you go to a website, you go to a website today and they're listing their Christmas Eve services. And it tells right. you, <laughs> it tells you several things, right? That they're, they're not exactly. paying they're attention not to it. To date. Yeah. Right. And it exactly. kind of tells you they don't feel their website's that important mm -hmm. and which is the front door for every new visitor is going to be their website. Right. And That's just, a what you do when you find something new is you look up, you'll look up the church and you'll find their website. Right. Well, maybe they're just trying to get ahead of the curve and, you know, want to advertise their Christmas Eve service in January or February. <laughs> in <you know>? January. <laughs> people there. Uh, I, I think that's a good point as far as content. And, and uh, now my understanding is when it comes to SEO stuff and, and Google, uh, and we've talked about this, of course, over the years, and there's really not really sure there's a secret sauce uh, with Google, but there's obviously something. But I, I have heard that if you can keep your content rele relevant and, and up to date, it does help. Uh, oh, your SEO is what I've been, I've been told yes. by certain people. So yes, there's a lot of different tips and tricks that we probably don't have time to go into a lot of them, but um, can do that. Another. But yeah, that that may, might be a good follow up um, podcast. Yeah. But yeah, it's definitely yeah. Google definitely likes you to um, be true to the information that you're giving. Don't. Um, this is more that they used to do in the past that they would just throw in a bunch of keywords and it wouldn't really make sense on the website just so that they could get SEO. Google's a lot smarter now. They, that won't work. Um, so really use words that you would naturally use, but, um, but you can do a bit of optimizing around certain keywords. If your church has certain things that they're more known for, you could accentu accentuate that um, and different, having different pages, having a blog that's, a really good way to attract visitors by SEO because you can have different articles about something that someone might look up and then they find you through that. Um, so yeah, there's there's a whole the yeah, whole yeah. other world of SEO. And, and probably a, just a completely other topic would be AdWords, right? Oh yes, yeah. I mean, yeah, we could ha really have a whole podcast on websites in general. 
I think that's something we would cer certainly will do here in the future. So let's move on here a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. And you've been helping us on all these areas now that you've joined our team. And one of the things you're helping us on a lot is our social media presence. Yes. And um, and that obviously is very important for ministries and churches. Mm -hmm. Yes, I found actually um, we just created our Instagram page and I found there are a lot of pastors that are using this tool. And I think it's really smart. They're getting a lot of engagement on it. And so with social media, you can, it depends on how um, kind of much bandwidth you have, who you have is going to run it, uh, for which social media platforms you should use, and also the age and other demographic factors of uh, most of your congregation. But obviously, like three of the big ones are Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, you could also do a LinkedIn. There's Google+, Plus, but no one really uses um whatever but, happened to google plus yeah they, they tried they tried so hard and it just never really took off yeah. um yeah. but which is interesting because google usually is very successful um but but a big part of social media is to do a mixture of your own content and then also reposting other people engaging with other people I've been noticing some pastors on um, Twitter and Instagram, they'll post a, a quote from their sermon that they thought was really impactful with like a nice graphic behind it and make mm -hmm. it look all nice. Um, and then they'll also, on Instagram, there's Instagram stories and you can repost some people's stories, especially if they tag you in it. And that's a way to engage with people. You can engage with people on Twitter, just commenting or retweeting their tweets. And so it's a way to both promote what your church is really aligned with, what your messages really are, and also to engage with your congregation. Um, and so when you look at social media, you can really just ask yourself what you're trying to achieve. Are you trying to get new visitors? Are you just trying, are you trying to kind of entertain visitors? Are you trying to do it more humorous, more serious? Would you like a mixture? Um, so you can kind of have an idea of your goals with so social media and then put a plan in place for each platform. I also recommend doing different types of posting for each platform, um, not just posting the same thing on everything, but actually having a plan for each one. Um, but yeah. Are there are there people in the space that I mean, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know, I'm just thinking of a like a high school scene, social scene, you know, there's the mm -hmm. real popular kids. And so there's 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 the popular kids that are on in the social media space. Mm -hmm. Is there uh, and I'm just asking, I don't, is, is there a way or is it or any benefit to try to connect up with or repost their stuff or have them post oh, your stuff or? Definitely. There's actually, there's kind of a middle ground you can find because if you, if you're trying to attract someone that has 1.5 million followers, they're a lot harder to get than someone that has about 200 K. So, but that's still a lot of followers. Uh -huh. So there's kind of a sweet spot you can find with so people how, how that would you, you try to connect with them. How, how do you, how would you go about connecting with them? Well, it depends if you have, um, if you have a certain post of theirs that you really connect with, you could either, you could share it like to them and send a DM asking if you can repost it. That's a way to connect with them. You can comment a lot or like a lot of their posts because especially people that you can look, if you want to be really strategic about it, you can look at, um, how many comments they get. And if they don't get more than, I would say like 20 comments, these people will really notice if you comment a lot. And mm -hmm. what can happen is if you kind of build a relationship with them first, like comment and don't just, um, don't just comment to comment, like actually have something to say and, or at least come up with something that you're like, oh, this is kind of an interesting point that I can make or I could um, say to them and comment and like on their things then they'll notice you and so then in a little bit of time you can um you can direct message them and say hey I, I like i really like your posts i was thinking about doing this or um and then also just naturally posting really good content um right. there's a lot of bigger instagrams or twitters or anything that'll <laughs> repost or republish content that they just really like and they didn't think about um so if you can kind of build that relationship and then also build your own presence so that um, if they, when, when they notice you, that they're interested in, you know, doing something with you. So 
another question for you here. Just mm -hmm. let's say you know, I'm a pastor of a church and I'm in this community and, uh, you know, I don't know everybody in my community, but mm -hmm. I want to reach the people in my community through these platforms, but I don't know them, you know, mm -hmm. is there a strategy for trying to figure out how to get connected up or have them notice me or do you mean that you don't know them personally, but you see them online? Oh, or no, I don't, I don't know them personally. And or I just, I just want to reach the people that are, you know, within the 10 miles of my church or so, I guess, mm. I guess I'm maybe right. out of luck there. I don't know. I'm just, no, no, here. you can use, um, well, you can use local, like using your local location on Instagram when you post things. Um, and also if you publish stories to the local thing, uh, some people will go in, I mean, I do, I, I'm in Portland and I'll go and I'll watch the Portland story. And so then it'll go through a bunch of different people's posts that are in Portland that tagged the geolo geolocation. So you can do it by using that feature on Instagram. You can use different hashtags that are more, um, like more local lo oriented. Local hashtags. Yeah. Like hashtags that you notice I have a list of hashtags that I pull from that I just collect <laughs> over time for different categories. And, a good and some of those are when you see a, a local posting and you notice like a hashtag that they use and then you go to it and it's a local hashtag um there's a lot of those for portland there's a whole bunch um and some. also just making sure that your location is on your website is on your social media um stuff like that like twitter sometimes will do more of a local it depends on the user settings really, but sometimes users will have it set up so that they're more um, like their hashtags are more geared towards local instead of um, like international or national. So, so yeah, there's a variety of ways that you can try and connect with people in like in the local area. Mm -hmm. All right. Right. Normally so, when I do that, I get, I get blocked usually, but, but uh, we won't get into that. <laughs> I'm sorry. What are, you, what are your hashtags, Phil? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Things like yeah, you know, city name churches or something, you know, Tucson churches would help maybe yeah. you know, get you discovered or. Yeah. yeah and, just, or being and, following, and following other, like you can yourself go into the location on Instagram, go into the hashtags and follow a bunch of people that are local and that you uh, would like to connect with. This is the, uh, something that a lot of different organizations do is just following <clears throat> different people and um, commenting on their things. And once again, I would say not to spam because people can really tell when it's just like a company automatically commenting. Um, but if you actually put some thought into it and then put some thought into your actual postings, when people go to your page, they'll, um, they'll want to connect with you. And I'm assuming you're your content you want to post is going to be consistent with your brand. Yes. So that you kind of, yes. All right. Of course, everything goes back to branding. That's why we right. started there. All right. So a uh, couple more minutes left here. Uh, one other point you have is don't ignore non digital yes. marketing. And yes. that's kind of what we were talking about when I first came on here. My exactly. history in the seventies and eighties, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you're talking about flyers, brochures, inserts, uh, word of mouth. Yeah. Word of mouth is incredibly powerful. Um, word of mouth is why that's something that yeah. companies, all organizations have been trying to figure out since <laughs> marketing began yeah. is how to get people just to talk to their friends about and recommend right. their, um, well, yeah. here in their church. Yeah. And yeah, so I think it's really important not to forget about that. Like, yes, we're in a digital age with a lot of exciting things like websites and social media and all of that, but it's important not to forget about in-person communication, in-person marketing, doing community outreach, um, being involved in your community, setting up, like going to events, setting up little um, little things like passing out flyers, passing out brochures. Um, yeah, different booths to different events. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and it's, I think, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Another thing that I would just, I, I go back to experience in my churches. Yeah. <laughs> and I think they do well is, is they equip the members with those kind of things. So there's, mm, yes, they come on a Sunday and we're going to have, you know, a Super Bowl service and they'll say, here's the Super Bowl tailgate party invite. And so they give everybody a bunch of invitations yes. to hand out. So, yes, yeah, so that ties to kind of one of my other points about not forgetting about your current congregation. Um, that, cause that is really important. Your congregations, it, that 
they're your church. Like they are the best ambassadors for your church. And if it's to reach out, like in, um, if they can reach out also digitally. If you're a congregation, if there's certain members that are very into social media and they wouldn't mind sharing your post, that would be great. And, um, but also not to forget about them when you're marketing as well. Um, you don't want to just focus all of your marketing efforts on new visitors. You want to also make sure that you're retaining and nurturing, I'll say nurturing a relationship with your congregation. Um, and making sure that they're in the know about different events you're doing, different um, really what's going on in your church, and make sure you don't lose that connection just because you're also wanting to get new vis right. visitors. Yeah, all right. So we're, we're just about out of time here, but you have a bullet point here that I wanted to ask you about. You, you, have, uh, you mentioned here emotional marketing mm -hmm. tips. What yes. do you mean by that? Yes. So this goes into a lot of people – we all, well, basically everyone, we all like to think that we're all logical thinkers and that we make decisions based on logic, but a lot of, a lot of people, you make decisions or at least their decisions are impacted by their emotions. And so it's really important to be careful with this. You don't want to, especially as a church, you don't want to try and play on people's emotions or try and manipulate in kind of a... I would, I don't, well, since I'm talking about churches, I'll say um, in an un like way, um, kind of trying to only do it like you're a business, basically. You want, but you can still use emotion to impact people because that's one of the best ways to do it. But just using emotion that's true to who your church is and isn't made up, it's actually um, when you give, like when you give a sermon, or when you share that on social media, or when you write a blog about it, that you can use emotional marketing and ways of connecting with people without it being fake. Use it in a way that it really does inspire people and it really does make them want to attend your church because of how they feel, but that feeling is real because you really did share something important sure. with them. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. I definitely get that. I'm doing a message this Sunday and I'm I'm talking a lot about grief and impermanence and I'm mm. sharing some humor, but I'm yeah. also sharing some some sad stories my, about right. my brother passing away. And it's right. legit. It's it's uh, it's very authentic. And, right. uh, it and that's a good way to connect with people. Yeah. yeah. Is and it is showing that emotion. I have I, I can attest to the you know, people like you were saying that that people try to make logical decisions, but I think almost every decision yeah. ultimately comes down to an emotional it's at least, decision. Yeah, it's at least a big, yeah, it's at least a large Emotion's impact. A yes. Yeah. Yeah. You wanna, yeah, you wanna, yeah. you wanna be able to involve their emotions into yeah. it. Yeah, so when you're marketing, you don't want it to all just be very cut and dry. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. You wanna- Here's our it. stats. Exactly, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Something like an engineer would try to do, yeah. Yes, yes. Want, exactly. <laughs> We're humans. We are humans, and, yeah, and we exactly. do have emotions. All right. So look, look, we're out of time. I think it's okay. We can we can ski it out here. We've been uh, talking with uh, Brittany Messinger, Messer, Messer Lee. There it is. There you go. You got it. You got it at the end. <laughs> well, and you even spell your name a little differently. True. Just the Brittany <laughs> part. But you so I always want to call you Brittany Ann because I, I see the A N, and I'm like, uh, I'm just going to call you Brit. Probably is what I'm going to call you. Yeah. Do you have, a, yeah. Do, you have a, do people call you Brit? Sometimes? People call me Brit. People also actually call me Britain, like Great Britain. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. See, that's easy for me to remember. So, yeah. <laughs> all right. So she's part of our team here, and uh, we're really we're kind of going over here, but I think it's been good material. And look, if you want if you want to give us some feedback on this, folks, uh, you can just send us an email support at streamingchurch.tv. That's one of our domains. And if if you uh, love to get your pros and cons on this. If you agree, yeah. great. If you don't, we'd love to hear from you. And also, hey, if you if you have questions about some of this, you know, we've covered some of this stuff pretty quickly. Yes, uh, I'm sure Brittany, Brittany would probably be available to try to answer mm -hmm. some of your questions. And again, just send us an email support at streamingchurch.tv, and uh, we will make sure she gets that. So, all right, good. Are we good to wrap things up here, guys? I think so. Yes, I think we're good to go. Okay, so Super. All right. Well, look, uh, that's Brittany and that's Steve. I'm Phil Thompson. Thanks for spending a little bit of your day, your day with us uh, on the Church Solutions podcast. Uh, take care. We will see you again next time. Have yourself a great day.